That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, oh god, it's a toad, it's son. It. Huh? It's Look a f***ing toad, dude. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Oh man, that was loud. Oh. What's going on, one cast fans? Welcome to Fishing Friday. Live. Coming at you live. Yes, we are. Friday. North Carolina. It's Friday. From the talk. Trey went fishing today. Just for a little bit. I did not go today. I went out yesterday and the day before. Did you? Yeah, it was really to troubleshoot my stuff, but um You got it back online now? Yeah. Eh. It's coming along. <laughs> uh Garmin's gotta send me a new transducer. For uh, for the live scope stuff, man. Ben fried his live scope transducer. Yeah, because he was using it too much. (laughs) No, that's the problem is because I probably wasn't using it enough. That's right. (laughs) When it when a boat sits, it breaks. Hundred percent. I I will say I did um I did flip a bladed jig up in the canal. Yeah, a couple cruising, and uh, I threw it up on the rocks. I cast a little too far, and so I thought I was hung, and I popped it. And when I popped it, sure enough, a fish had it in his mouth, and I just ripped it right out of the little bass's mouth. Well, out of practice. I'm 100% out of practice. What kind of jig was that, Ben? It was a snagless jig. Snagless bladed jig. That's right. Snagless bladed jig. And so if you want to get your hands on some of those, head on over to onecastfishing.com and use the code, the one cast and join the snagless revolution. You can, uh, you can catch fish. Ben just accidentally didn't catch that fish. I promise. But he's got our podcast apparels on the, uh, on the the one cast fishing website. And then uh, all the soft plastics, weedless nets, snagless jigs of all kinds um what else am i missing long neck hooks long neck hooks Soft there plastics. they are it's a long neck hooks that blank my mind but head on over to onecastfishing.com and use the code the one cast to save a little change yep what's going on david justin in the house chris curtis over on youtube what's going on buddy on youtube oh uh, awesome you know you can head also to carolina waters nc.com use the code the one cows one cast the one <laughs> no Woo! The code the one cast all one word to check out uh, to save twenty percent off your order. Get some hats, uh, some nice shirts, uh, some fishing apparel, your sun shirts, things like that. Uh, again, that's CarolinaWatersNC.com. Code the one cast at checkout. Uh, also, newest partner Hobie Eyewear. I'm gonna post uh, in the chats our link tree uh, link. If you click on that, it'll take you to a page that has all of that. And um, make sure that you check out uh, Hobie Eyewear, who's uh, our, our newest uh, collaboration partner. Uh, we're ambassadors for them, whatever you want to call it. Uh, super excited to be on board with them. They're just Get, our friends, dude. They're just our friends. They're just Dylan is our friend. Uh, they're all buddies, um, all our buddies. We've had a great show with them. If you have questions about their glasses and technology, things like that. Uh, but use that link uh, that I'm going to post uh, in the link tree. Click on the Hobie, take you there, save 15% off. Uh, you end up getting a hundred dollar right around a little more than a hundred dollar pair of glasses for 85 bucks. So it's tough well, to beat that. And you know, we've been getting blown up and we appreciate it. So if you guys haven't checked it out, like go over, like Pete said, um, if you're scared of losing your sunglasses in the water, but you don't like wearing the lanyard, you need to check out the floating series. They got a ton of different, uh, floating series. If you go to the collections and then in collections, it says, uh, floating collections. So go check those out. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And speaking of not being disappointed, Christine, also, appreciate you ordering some. That's awesome. You're going to love them. You are definitely going to love them. You're also going to love finding that piece of property that you guys so much want with interest rates being the way they are. Eric Swind, our buddy at Mossy Oak Properties, he's going to help you guys find that little piece of paradise out in the woods, wherever you're looking for, whether or not it's just land or if you're looking for a home or anything like that. So you can hit him up at 936 494 nine six eight six or shoot him an email at e s c h w i n d at mossy oak properties dot com hey Corey, we uh saw your comment up there that's awesome you caught the first one on the uh snagless jig if you got a picture of it shoot it over to us because uh i'd like to repost that it's good it's good marketing user generated content is that's what they right. call it david said first tournament tomorrow for my club christine l fuchs that's his wife is fishing her t- first tournament with us you're gonna get the bug now christine Oh, Doug Phillips. Oh, Doug is, Phillips. Uh, While we got Doug on, I want to bring up an event that they're doing on May yeah, 18th. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah. So next week's pre-recorded episode. For those of you who don't know, because I know we get a lot of folks come on here live, interact with us. That's awesome. We also record and release a show every week. Uh, it comes out Thursdays on at noon uh, on YouTube uh, and then any of the podcast platforms yeah. where you listen to podcasts. The, the YouTube usually comes out closer to 7 p.m. just because it 
algorithm wise it works yeah, better. It works better. Yeah. Um, but next week we have uh, Take a Warrior Fishing Inc. They came in uh, this this past week and and we interviewed them. Uh, Doug Phillips is in the chat. Uh, FLR Outdoors Incorporated also uh, runs the Piedmont Bass Classics. Is putting on a, a Spring Warrior Clash. Uh, it's at Sharon Harris Reservoir on May 18th. I'm saying it very proper. Reservoir. Reservoir. <laughs> it's at Sharon Harris on May 18th here in North Central North Carolina. Um, it is free for boaters and free for vets. So what they're going to do is you sign up as a boater. Uh, they're going to pair you with a vet, a uh, wounded vet, unwounded. Everybody's got trauma, whatever it is. You're going to get paired with a veteran uh, or an active duty. It's, it's either veteran or active duty. Somebody that's fought or is fighting for our freedoms. Uh, you're going to get paired up with them. It's a fun little tournament bunch of prizes and giveaways and stuff uh so if you're a boater in north carolina you're on here and you don't have something already on may 18th go to piedmontbassclassics.com and sign up to be a boater uh, i finally signed up last night uh, i think trey's in as a warrior but uh if if they get too many warriors he's gonna flop over to the boater side to make sure that those warriors can get in hopefully ben's gonna join us um i may be out of town might yeah you just have to look yeah. might be at a concert but um and may that's see, may 18th, 18th. 18th so if you're listening and also if you're a warrior they still do need some so you can go to uh take a warrior fishing it was no it's warrior fishing warrior fishing dot org warrior fishing dot org uh <laughs> and you can sign up for that there so there doug just said yes there are 12 open spots and then we're on standby for boaters and anglers that's awesome hey doug while you're in the comments if you wouldn't mind dropping exactly how or a link to uh your website um for the warriors or for the boaters uh go ahead and drop that that way people can check it out if not we'll do it for you yeah um but doug doug runs a fantastic uh tournament circuit here in the piedmont region the pbc has been around for a long time and uh it's, it's a great circuit so doug's doing doing uh take a warrior fishing inc a huge service and doug just retired from the military himself so but like pete said uh you guys won't want to miss that episode when it drops uh next next thursday, thursday. next yep. thursday it's gonna be a good one and what the, their mission how they're doing it's really awesome so <laughs> what mike uh, is that ben, mike john it had to be mike <laughs> ben said concert britney spears you know it so uh yeah yep it was mike not, so not quite but by the way, they come through the weeds and overbrush pretty smoothly. I'm impressed so far. Oh, he's talking about the snaggles, Jay. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's why we designed them that way. <laughs> yeah. They come through that veg, man. Unfortunately, we don't have any veg up here. So they killed most of them. Yeah, we yeah. kill all the grass in North Carolina because we don't like grass. Go but, for it, um, Doug. Drop the link in there whenever, bro. Yeah. So we got that coming up. We've got a bunch of anglers coming up as usual. And some other kind of cool stuff that's a, a little bit out of the ordinary. You probably haven't heard some of those folks on other podcasts, but just industry stuff. We have, uh, well, I always give away what's going on. So we've got the folks from, o is it o Oklahoma? Oklahoma, the Bass Tub. The bass yeah. tub. Oklahoma Bass Tub is coming on. There, You see all those big tanks at the shows. Is it Bass stuff. Tub or Bass Tank? Might be Tank. So I don't know. We'll get it when they come on. We'll get it <laughs> this right. This is pretty bad. <laughs> i think it's bass tank let me go through my picture but um they're gonna come on the show yeah i, I thought it was tub it might be tank they're gonna come on the show and talk about that whole side of of fishing shows and in the industry and traveling around with those tanks and fish and water and all that so now uh, that'll be pretty cool something different bass tubs, bass of, tubs of oklahoma so we were all sort of right and wrong <laughs> um so yeah as far as us Tomorrow, Trey and I are going to go do a little fishing, a little, little pre-fishing pre pre -fishing for a tournament we have next weekend. Where's your tournament at? Lake X. Lake X. <laughs> it's no, up. It's, it's up. at Bugs it's Island. Like, yeah, Kerr. Uh, what time are you guys getting up tomorrow? Early. Uh, five. But oh, it yeah, does, that's, it right. Does, that's right, because it gets yeah, light later. Yeah. Yeah. And the weather's supposed to be good, too, right? Yeah, yeah. it's going to be decent tomorrow. So it'll be a good day to go up there and run around. And uh, looking forward to that. And then Red Crest is going on. Haven't really watched it a whole bunch. Um, there was some drama that I wish I would have caught, uh, <laughs> yeah. but Ryan Salzman leading right now. Let me just sniff this marker. Real yeah. Quick. <laughs> Ryan Salzman is leading right now at the end of day two. So they made the cut today to the top 10 weights will reset, uh, tomorrow and tomorrow is championship tomorrow. Or do they fish four days? I can't I remember if Red Crest is three or four days. Nick, what's Red Crest? Three or four days? I think it's four days. Um, so yeah, they'll reset the weights top 10 go. And uh, we're going to see what happens. So, but apparently J -j -j there was some drama, which I'm glad I, I'm glad I missed, but I'm kind of upset I missed because, you know, on the water drama between anglers is, is always interesting. Uh, and apparently uh, 
now I, I didn't see it, so this is what I'm gathering. Yeah, this this is all here. Apparently, a say from uh, Bass Fishing Forum. Yeah, but it was on live, so yeah. I, it'll come out here eventually. But apparently, Adrian Avina uh, slid into Michael Neal's spot. Michael was leading the tournament yesterday, uh, and um, yeah, apparently some words were exchanged, uh, and and apparently uh, they went around and asked some of the other anglers about the situation and. And it came out that that Avina had told Dustin Connell he was going to fish that spot, and Dustin said, "Hey man, that's where Michael's leading the tournament at. You need to stay out of there." Uh, Adrian went anyway, uh, and then apparently Michael Neal blamed somebody else for telling Adrian about the spot. So a whole bunch of drama going on in the BPT. Uh, so it is four days for Redcrest. So uh, I might tune in Sunday for the final day just to see who wins that. But I'll be fishing tomorrow. So well, if you got service, have it on the water. No. <laughs> I, I can't watch fishing while I fish. I did see uh, Dustin Connell. No. What well, Dustin Connell? I, I think they had some pretty uh, torrential downpour happen at Lay Lake, right? Or I don't. Yeah, know Jacob Wheeler just quit fishing. Yeah, so Wheeler quit fishing. <laughs> Dustin Connell was hiding under a dock, but he did set the hook on a on a fish while they were hiding under a dock and broke his rod tip and stuff. I just saw that saw that short clip. Yeah, Connell went did he under get the fish. No. It broke his rod. Or, I mean, Wheeler went under one of those covered docks and just put his power poles down and started retying everything while it was pouring down rain. Hey. But it, it, that's one of the things I love and I hate about the BBT is the weights reset, right? So if he know if you know you're safe, you don't even you have just to get out of the rain, man. Yeah. It's just going to zero and you're you're back after it. So yeah. Um. <clears throat> so that's going on in the BPT. Uh, nothing with the elites. A classic is next weekend. Super excited for that one. I think it's going to be. I think it's gonna be a good tournament. Yeah. It's setting up pretty well. I had wild. I had a wild hair today. I look at. I looked at flights from Raleigh to Oklahoma City or Tulsa for like Wednesday. How much are the flights? I think to Tulsa was like six hundred. I think it was like maybe four or five hundred to Oklahoma. So many. I, I even looked at Springfield, Missouri. What's the drive to Tulsa from here? A long way. Eight, I'm just curious. Eighteen hours, Ugh. twenty hours, probably. Yeah. I can. I, I can't. That's it's, what, it's about four. I think Tulsa is about four hours, five hours past. I can make it to Tulsa in like eleven from Pittsburgh. Not yeah. even. But it is further yeah. west, so that yeah. makes sense. But yeah, so I mean, maybe Ben's gonna get on an airplane. I don't. Know. Classic. No, I'm not do it. <laughs> uh, I, I I I wanted to. It'd be awesome just to go, like, go just watch it this year. It'll, yeah, it'll already start when we go live next Friday. Speaking of which, you have two. You have this week, next week, and then the following week we're doing the first giveaway. So if you have not went and left us a review, uh, screenshot it and send it to us, you're not entered. So go leave us a review on the podcast site of your choice. Uh, if you don't listen to the audio podcast, which you can do Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Amazon Music, anywhere that podcasts are available, if you go in there and leave us a review, either – if you can't leave words, just stars. If you can leave stars and words, please do. Do, do that. Screenshot it. Send it, to it. send it to us. Get entered. We've got five months of giveaway uh, starting on the last Friday of this month. And this this month, we're giving away a Cash and Icon Chatterbait Rod uh, and a uh, one cast bladed jig set to go along with that snagless bladed jig. So make sure you get entered so you can win that. Uh, we also have, over the next couple months, a low rants Fish Finder. Uh, we've got a couple pair of Hobie glasses. We've got Carolina waters gear. We've got missile baits. We've got swamp Fox customs baits. We've got a jig box, a edge box completely full of one cast old school jigs. We've got all kinds of stuff. So make sure you get entered. If you were not, uh, if you left your review today on Spotify, shoot us a screenshot. Yep. Oh, I see your, I see it's you, Nick. I'll add you. You're good. Yeah. Eddie. Yeah. Uh, uh, Springfield was about two hundred dollars cheaper than both Tulsa and Oklahoma City, and I know it's because I was looking at Wednesday, which everyone's probably flying in to go to the Classic or something. Yeah, but uh, I was surprised. It was, I, it was I'll cheaper. tell you what, I'm I wouldn't drive that far to go watch like the Classic. I would have to take my boat and go fish somewhere. <laughs> yeah, whoever <laughs> said that, you're absolutely right. If you leave one star, please tell me why we suck because I do not like to know why. Somebody left us a one star review, and I look every day to see if they've gone in there and updated it because it is driving me absolutely crazy. <laughs> why it's one star? I just want to know what we do better. It was probably Mike. It probably was Mike John. <laughs> so I'm blocking his phone number. As soon as Speaking we're of Mike Johns, we fished a tournament today. Uh, an on the phone tournament. An on the phone tournament. It was actually really fun. Uh, 
He's down fishing. Uh, I won't say where he's fishing right now, but it, well, he's practicing for Toyota. He's on the Harris chain. He's on the Harris chain, but I won't say which lake. Yeah, you don't have to say what lake. But um, yeah, it was pretty fun, man. He was uh, he was whacking them. He had like four to my one, just because you know how Florida fish are. There's five million twelve inches everywhere, so he was catching eleven inches for sure. Uh, <laughs> but it was it was a good time, man. Like oh, that was Dave Dave Fuchs. Um, and then speaking of David Fuchs, man, you're going to be down here next month. So definitely yeah, looking, uh, weeks. yeah, looking forward to that. So when you get down here, the spawn will be full fledged. And I can tell you right now, they ain't moving up. I'm just saying it. They're just not moving up. That's all I'm saying. So of course I'm the first one to spend everybody. All you have to do is Google Toyota series and they're going to know that they're going to be on the, the dang Harris chain. Mike, it's not like I'm giving anything. I can say what lake you were on whacking them. If you want me to actually the, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> guess which one is. I think the, um, I won't confirm nor deny. Mike said that the, uh, Fishers and men national championship is going on right now down at, uh, at the Harris chain of lakes. I think they got like 180 boats. And oh, the, wow. So the, they got a, they got a real big field. So those fish are going to get pounded on, uh, but it should get, saying, it should give them like a week, uh, to reset before the, uh, the Toyota series starts. So, but there's so many bass down there. It doesn't really matter. Phil's but, Cove off of uh, East. They're, they're always <laughs> getting hammered in that. System. Yeah, they so are. That's, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Mike, you can probably speak more, but I don't think pressures is big on those fish down there because there's so many fish and it's constant that it's, I'm I sure they get a little bit harder to catch, but. It's not like here where you can just shut down an entire I feel, lake. I feel like we should just send a link to StreamYard to Mike right now and bring him on and talk about Harris Chain. <laughs> no. Nah. It's too much work. Oh, you said Harris Chain, not the yeah. Toho. I was looking at Toho. Kissimmee Chain. They actually moved out on Jordan, but falls today. We got them in one foot of water. Well, P PBC has a tournament tomorrow on falls, and I guarantee it's going to take well over 20 pounds to, oh, yeah. win, to win that tournament for sure. There's a 275 high school tournament out of Green Pond tomorrow. Yeah, that lake gets hammered too. Yeah, Hartwell. Yep. Yep. So yeah, it starts Tuesday. Good, good few days break though. Yeah, they'll get a little bit of a rest. That'll be good. Uh, Jordan. I mean, I, I know some guys that went on and whacked them on Jordan today. I'm not going to say where they caught them, but they whacked them in the water. They were in the water. Everybody always whacks them on Jordan. I mean, I got pictures. I got receipts. So yeah, I don't believe anything unless somebody sends me. Did pictures. they text it to you? You need to check the oh, yeah, stamp on it. Get those geotag. <laughs> no, I've, I've taught everybody that I know how to turn that off. <laughs> Weights are going to be a little bit lower for the Toyota. Yeah, it's possible, man, because they got. I think they got a cold front coming in on the day of the tournament or something like that. So catching retreads is not ethical. Yeah, you can catch retreads. I'm all about that, man. If you're if it's not if if it's not in a tournament rules that you can't fish in X number of feet uh, of a boat ramp, go catch them retreads, bro. I know the BFLs are pretty because you don't know any fish could be a retread. What if it just got caught two days ago I mean, and it, it was a three pounder, but the guy had 30 pounds? I mean, look, look at, at every it. fish you catch in the North Carolina lake and it's going to have holes in it. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a story. That's right, Corey. It's just a story without pictures. Yeah, but even pictures lie, bro, because they could be from last year. So whatever. <laughs> Trey is the most skeptical person because if he believe, doesn't go out and whack him and somebody else does, there, it didn't happen. A hundred percent, dude. hundred percent, hundred percent, dude. I don't believe anything that I that I hear over the phone. There, there is no live scope ban. There's not going to be live scope ban. We're never going to see a live scope. Did somebody, uh, somebody okay. just said, "What have y'all heard about the live scope ban?" If you so, heard that they're going to ban live scope, somebody's running their mouth that doesn't know the anything only, about it. The only thing that has been brought up has been brought up by Matt Stefan. And it was put it, it there's a bill to be foot put in front of legislators for Wisconsin. I think it was like number 13 on the list. Before you get, go and explain all that, it's not an actual bill. All that was was somewhere where a public could or post proposal. a comment. Nope, it's not even going to the house. It it was a forum where anybody in the public can post a proposal for them to consider potentially talking about opening a bill. So some some yokel like us just went in there and typed something out about forward facing sonar and then a bunch of screenshots got got and uh, I tell you taken. what this Alabama is what, ABA might have, but I mean it's the ABA. It doesn't like the, the states aren't gonna do it unless there's a drastic like empirical evidence that it's hurting a fishery. Yeah. Because guess what? All those little state reps when Garmin and Johnson outdoors they start calling them up and be like know how much you're going to cost me I'll, I'll i'll donate to your opponent i mean that they're not going to pass that pete's trying to do, if, yeah if alabama right aba now. live scope ban actually happened 
more than likely the ABA, which is national, is going to step in and tell them they can't ban it because they get money from uh, the electronic sponsors and they'll kill that if they take it away. And it's all about money. Yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens, man. Any organization has the absolute right to ban forward facing sonar. That article is it from that's, your Yeah, that's way old. I remember that. Yeah. That was a uh that was an April Fool's joke. Yep. That one I'm wired to fish. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the number uh, one article when you Google it's an April Fool's joke. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's nothing I can find about ABA look banning live scope. But if you have something, yeah, like, if you have some if you have a send, link, post it up for yeah, us. Yeah, send so us the link. It. Uh yes, cash. Oh, what do you say? Y'all might be proud of me. I fished a BFL on Norman and got sixth place. That's awesome. Dude. Heck yeah, dude. That's 12 awesome. two. That's Congrats. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah that's a, that's bigger than any bag I've ever caught on Lake Norman. I'll tell you that. Yeah. That's a, that's a good, especially as a co-angler, uh, cash and has a new forward facing rods. Yep. They do. Who said that? That was David Fuchs. I've had one of the rods for a f- little over two years now that I've been <laughs> playing with. Um, and it, it's I didn't get it special. What what, what is a forward facing sonar? They're just, it's just built for throwing those light jigs. Oh, uh, like your jig head minnow. That's all. It's it's the right rod with the right action, the right the right spine, and everything to be able to keep fish pegged. That's I a, mean, it is technology. I mean, there's technology that goes into it. Yeah, um, that's weird. What's going on, Jeff? Transducer should be built into the boat. It's only a matter of time. Uh, I mean, that, Gerald Swindle said something about the ABA banning forward face. Yeah, I just looked. There's nothing anywhere about the maybe the Alabama bass, like the Alabama bass trail might, but the actual ABA, I can almost guarantee you will yeah, not. Yeah, maybe it's the a, ABT did. I don't know. Because the ABA is a national trail and they get money from Lawrence and Garmin and Humminbird and they're not going to risk those sponsor dollars to ban something that. Uh, the, the, the only thing I can really see happening from like a tournament organization standpoint. Because Bassmaster does have their whatever committee that they established to look mm-hmm. at it. Yeah. I could see them regulating how many you have, maybe, or how many can be used at a at a single time. Kind of like yeah. they they regulate rod links and why are we getting wrapped up in this conversation? Because, again? It's, <laughs> because it's the number yeah, one. Yeah, let's talk about something else. I don't want to talk about it. it, it, it I'm, there, I can't find anything. If the ABA ban if the out uh, it was ABT. So if Jeff, I just Googled it, there was nothing there. If we do find that the Alabama Bass Trail has banned forward-facing sonar, then that's a right. Then we will talk about it when that's true, because they'll be the first one to uh, to do that. So that's <laughs> a real thing with cash and rods. It is, yeah. They just released the forward-facing sonar series of rods today. Um, they're great rods. So, so one of them, I it's it's not the exact same, but they have a rod that, called the hair jig rod that was made for throwing hair jigs. It's very close to one of them. I've been using it to throw that technique for for a little over a year now and it works really really well Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a medium light um seven four so you can bomb those little lightweights out there Uh, it's just a really good rod keeps them pegged all that good stuff yeah jeff if you find the post uh just post it in there and we'll we can talk about it but so what else is going on in uh, the bass fishing world yeah uh, (laughs) uh, what's up man somebody else is new who is that tony what's going on tony hey did you make it to red crest i have heard that uh that that show is a disaster. So Tony I was, we were rapping the other day and um, he said he was heading down there with his wife. I will. I, I was me swatting mosquito. That's the first mosquito of 2024 that I've seen. Yeah. It's, it's about to land on yeah. tray. I will, I will say this. If I slap you, it's the mosquito tray. I promise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> today, today I saw some photos of like bass cat and uh, Camus at, at red crest. So then I, I tried to Google, you know, the red crest expo, like layout vendors and all can't find nothing. And we tried it again this evening. Like there's no list of vendors that we have found with like a floor plan layout. Yeah. We don't even know who who's there and who's not there. And yeah. Mike John. So let's talk about Trey not calling me back. Uh, I didn't call you back cause I was busy catching fish. Jeff said, what not do you tie braid to fluorocarbon? I use an FG. Dude. What's going on, dad? My old man's tuning in from Belize. He's oh, down there fly Lord fishing for bone fish and all that oh, stuff that's right not- now. What not do you, okay. So what not do you use to tie fluorocarbon? It depends on which bait. Oh, uh, Tony, you are, hold on. You all right, dude. I hope you're all right. We'll send some prayers. up. He said he had a bad accident with his boat. So hopefully you're what? okay, man. Oh Yeah. Let us know, Tony. If you don't want to put it out there to the world, you can shoot me a message. Just let me know what's going on and if there's anything we can do. You've been you've been a supporter for a long time, so uh, shoot me a DM. We've been we've been chatting, so 
All but right. Jeff, what not to use to tie braid to fluorocarbon? I'll let Trey answer first. To tie braid to fluorocarbon, it's only one, and that's the Alberto knot. Yeah, same knot I use. 100%. FG knot. FG knot. I can tie the FG and I did, um, and there, there's absolutely no reason to uh, because every knot contacts the guides and causes friction and eventually breaks down. Uh, an Alberto knot goes just fine through eyes. Um, if you're using a bait caster, I, I will caveat. If you're using a bait caster and you have the micro eyes, you probably want to tie an FG knot. Uh, but for me, on a the only time I go braid to fluorocarbon is on a spinning rod. Um, and I use the Alberto knot and it, it comes through the eyes. I can tie it. I can tie seven to one FG knot, even for the people that say they're fast with FG knots. I'll tie that Alberto knot seven times. Actually, we um, just, uh, you just the other night, you, uh, kind of gave Chelsea an overview on how to, yeah, how to get that tied up. But I don't tie braid to fluorocarbon except for spinning rods. That's just the way. But, you know, Brian Latimer said it years ago. He was like, tie whatever knot works for you. Right. That's so what is important, it, you know, like finger dexterity is a big thing. Like the older you get, the worse they get. Right. So, you know, certain knots are harder to freaking tie. Oh, man, so the Albright, the Albright knot, but um, tie the knot you that know, works for you. You know what I mean? I, you, I'm thinking, you know, this is um, this is a funny topic. I was going to say before you answer, nothing will start an argument or debate like a knot question well, or video. on well, the Yeah, go ahead. Because I, I know where you're going. I'm going with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I use except for like my crankbait rods and a couple, a couple of them, I use almost exclusively braid to, to fluoro. And a lot of times my braid is my backing. Mm -hmm. I'll use half to spool on, on braid. And I've been doing that pretty much since I started fishing because, or the, really the last 10 years, because that was kind of big about 2014, 15. Mm -hmm. And I've made some videos about it and people are like, why would you do this? And all this, you know, braid's so expensive. But then, like Aaron Martins was doing it back in 2010. He's, there's mm -hmm. YouTube videos about it and why they do it that way, and for all these reasons. So it's all personal preference. Um, there's no right way or wrong way to do it. Um, I just prefer using braid because I keep the same braid on there for a, a while. Yeah, I don't. Time. I don't think I would go with a bowline knot to tie a uh, braid. <laughs> yeah, the the, the hardest part, <laughs> no. the hardest part with that braid to fluoro is just getting that fluoro trimmed all the way down as close as you possibly can so that your your lot is if this for, is with the alberta knot, this yeah. is with the alberta knot for on spinning rods it's it doesn't impact bait casters at all or at least i've never had it but i don't throw it on them uh but you're you're especially if you're trying to vertically jig and and release your bail a lot of times that braid or that that fluorocarbon will get caught on the the tag end of that fluorocarbon so you gotta you gotta cut that very closely but um i don't even use fluorocarbon really like the only fluorocarbon i use is with my jerk baits um everything else is copoly it's not even true fluorocarbon and and the reason is is two two reasons one it's way less expensive and then two there's a little bit of stretch with that line uh that i like so and it does just fine for me so you know whatever line you like to use use that line whatever knot you like to tie tie that knot it's, but jeff just, i don't put glue on my knots no i, I, I know have, some guys that i have that before with an fg knot mm -hmm. um if that's who i was exclusively pretty much gonna be fishing that day but i haven't noticed it really helped that much or not yeah you just got to get the right pair of snips like you can definitely do the glue on the line um you know i've seen guys try to you know do bobbers like really small bobber stops sliding sliding it down and stuff like that to get over the end of that line it's a little challenging dude but you can do it uh is there a mosquito or is there hair like a um but dust. uh but you just got to have the right pair of snips like a small pair of dykes does a really good job at at snipping that floral or copoly or mono, whatever you're using down. So it just depends on what you have, though. And I pretty much 100% fluorocarbon right. on everything. Yeah, I'm the same way. Um, I do use copoly for top water because it still floats. Um, and then I guess I've got some mono, or I use straight braid depending on where I'm fishing. And then I do water. the and only mono I use is on a Carolina rig because I like to have my, my leader float because it helps keep that bait up above mm -hmm. that weight when you're dragging it but mm -hmm. other than that i'm straight floor on everything buzz baits and then like i said i throw yeah I throw that's crazy we had that conversation earlier yeah. i was asking pete like how do you throw your buzz baits he uses fluoro on yeah. pretty much all of his top water except for frogs frogs and, i use 65 pound braid and then walking baits and pop bars i do use copoly yeah i i use braid for all my top water <laughs> pete 
mosquito on the back of trees that gave it a swat yeah <laughs> who was that mike all right t- let me the storm was coming i was heading in but in 40 foot of white capping water and i didn't see stumps and i hit it and it threw me to passenger seat i have two cracks in the bottom of my boat and a broken transom had about 50 gallons of water by the time i got oh my god well thank god you're uh yeah, yeah, on here okay. talking to us and i can't believe you're even on the show right now man. yeah <laughs> appreciate you jumping on i'm yeah. glad that you're okay uh boats can be fixed bones will heal uh but you know lives can't so i'm glad you're you're with us Mm -hmm. in relatively good shape hopefully you had your pfd on if not it's a uh it's just had to be nick dude look at here here's this is awesome though so you got i don't know who that was i use mono on crankbait still and then you got i use a three foot liter of mono on my frogs you know like everybody that's mike johns he's being facetious okay well mike definitely doesn't do that he uses braid I, th- I yeah use the braid but i uh, bet you did tony but like i said boats can be fixed man you're alive and that's all that matters so good but, well i was just saying it's interesting like you see everyone has their own like they're comfortable with what they do yep. and you know like i can't stand using mono on the end of a of a uh, carolina rig and the reason being is i feel like you lose a lot of fish depending on how they're biting right so if they're not biting really good when you're trying to get that hook set there is a lot of stretch in mono but if it works for you it works for you for me i go co-poly to co-pilot what what if i told you and this is a scientific fact that there's more stretch in fluorocarbon than there is a monofilament Uh, i i don't i don't believe anything that i hear uh because most of the time it's just proven wrong so and scientists are human beings and they lie all the time this is from a line manufacturer fluorocarbon actually stretches more than monofilament but it takes more pressure to get it to start stretching uh I, I, yeah i would, I would. it'll stretch more but it, it's a lot harder to get to stretch which is why why folks prefer it with with a carolina with rig. more baits yeah okay and i don't i don't know why i like it on the carolina rig i haven't had that i use super heavy mono like 20 pound test so it's like rope back there. i know i in the last time i tried it i think i used 14 pound mono and what are you using back. for your main line uh 17 pound fluorocarbon okay or co-poly right no floor i use straight fluoro on everything except for two top water rods then that's what i throw my walking baits and my pop bars on everything else that's is straight fluoro and frogs braid to fluorocarbon on a c rig i know a lot of people that that's do that true. i, I did it fluoro. for a long time i just i Actually, hate braid. I try that Especially if you have a, a, a lot longer leader. Yeah. Uh, two or three I foot leader. down, by the way. Yeah, that's good. I had like he had like an eight and a half foot leader. <laughs> I, didn't you know? I don't know how he was throwing it. Sir, he pulled it out and he took it off. I'm like, you threw in a C rig and the weight was touching the eye and it was still a foot off the deck. And I'm like, how are you even going to throw that? Hey, they say the longer the leader, the better, man. It's like throwing a drop shot with a three foot leader. Tony, too. you're going to Red Crest to see the pros. Why do I hate braid? I don't hate braid. I just don't prefer braid. Um, I don't, it, it's a preference thing. Like we said, you got to be comfortable with what you do, right? 100%. And I used braid for a long time, braid to fluoro like Ben did. And then I got a bad batch of braid and I lost a tournament because I broke fish off because of braid failing. And I haven't used straight braid except for on frogs since. Um, I'm going to look for Wheeler, shake his hand. Yeah, make sure you said, tell him that Trey Thompson, his biggest fan, said hello. Um, it's just me, though, he, honestly. He's got a signed t shirt. Like, yeah, Gerald Rhodes kills him with braided fluorocarbon. Braided fluorocarbon is a great, I'm not, nobody's right or wrong in this, right? Right. Me yeah. personally, I just am not a fan of using braid. I feel like I, I'm just more comfortable with straight fluorocarbon. So I, I, and I comfort I, it, is everything in fishing. If you're not comfortable and confident in what you do, you're going to, you're, you're going to fail. So you have to be confident. I have snapped, I've snapped braid too. And everybody asks me all the time, like, why do you throw a 65 pound braid uh, on your frog rod? Cause I broke 50 on a hook set. So I went to 65 and I haven't broke it yet. I think you just, and for me, that's that you it. just, you just got to get the recipe, right? Um, and you're absolutely welcome on that Cortland line. Uh, What's going on fish and faith NC. Glad to see you in the house, but hope you're doing well. You know, braid, depending on the rod you're using, like the reason I don't use braid, like on a, on a Carolina rig, a, I, I don't know if I've ever tried, but B, like, I'm not sure I would be able to, you know, on a Carolina rig, like you, you need a sense, a good rod to feel that bite. Right. Like, and I, I don't know if I would be able to feel it with braid, but I, I'll try it. I'll yeah. definitely try it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You and I to feel more braid. That's what everybody yeah. says, but I don't feel like I do. 
I feel, I feel that well, again, it's a confidence yeah, thing, it's right? Tight, like, right. It's supposed to be because there's 65 no pound braid. Pretty much everybody I know throws 65 pound braid on frogs, Mike. You also fish with fluorocarbon in Florida, and everybody says you're crazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, Justin, I'm also braid to fluoro on all my spinning rods. That's yeah. the the one time I still use it. I just I lost confident, and when I got to put a lot of pressure on a fish and braid to fluoro, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you need it for them gators. That's right. <laughs> um, I just feel when I'm putting pressure on stuff, jig, flipping, anything like that, I just don't feel confident with uh, the braid to fluoro anymore. So I went straight fluoro. You know what's funny is my PB uh came on so when i first got into to like actual bass fishing i was using it's it's sitting out there right now it's one of the one of the free rod and reel combos that we got from orders on the water is a lose speed stick or whatever I, I can't remember the name of it but i used to go straight braid like 20 or 30 pound braid to a wacky worm hook and throw a wacky worm just like that and you know what thinking about it now I feel like I caught more fish doing that. You know what I mean? I definitely lost less fish doing that. But yeah. I, I, I think the fish, I think we get in this mind like the fish are getting more pressured. We got to use smaller diameter line, more clear stuff, all that stuff. But when they're when it's in the spawn, I'm not sure if that really matters. And that's when I caught my PB was in the spawn. So I don't know. I know um, <laughs> Sam flipping got crickets. Him. We've been fishing. He, he cranks a braid. Does he? And I know he, a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No There's a lot of people that fish with straight braid. You know, I'm gonna try some different techniques out since we're uh we're having this conversation on live. Like, you know, I told you guys I was gonna throw a chatterbait this year or a bladed jig. I have thrown it. I haven't caught a single freaking fish on it. Uh, but I'm gonna keep throwing it. I promise Pete saw me take one out of the boat today. I'll throw it. So what'd you take? A chatterbait, you bladed jig. Throw I'll throw it. I'll throw it. You, the thing is you throw it three times. Yeah, I don't know. It's, again, it's a confidence thing, right? Like a bladed jig, just, I'm just not confident. See, my dad, Braid DeMona, Carolina, helped float the bait. Yep. Pete's dad actually knows how to catch fish, so I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> He's I did it that way a long time. Man, we were talking some line tonight, huh? Yeah, and we got a whole series coming. I just got to get get Dale lined out, a hey, line manufacturer I, to come on and talk I, about everything. I still love this because everyone's got their own preferences, and yeah, people are so dogmatic with it because you uh -huh. see it in the comments, like all those narc videos I used to do, and yeah, you got it bad on TikTok, that, didn't you? It's people are like, uh, it's you're just doing a demonstration video of whatever knot it is, Palomar knot, uh, improved clinch knot, I pick your knot, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, use this one, this one. Don't use a braid on this one, or make sure you wet your line. It was just laying in the water. <laughs> I just took it out of the water. I don't I need to, you know, it, it's just... That's one thing I don't do. I don't know. I know Pete does it. He's like slobbers all over his line, but like, right. I don't, I don't like slobber, you know, no, I get all that. Over. I make sure but, he's wet, but But I feel like fluoro burns worse you have like you have powder. to make sure it's wet yeah if it's not wet with fluoro you're gonna and that's a lot of guys that don't like fluoro because they say knots don't hold us because they're burning their line yeah. whatever you can cinch it down as tight as you want it but just make sure she's wet before you do it yeah yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> and that means if you just took it out of the water it's yeah probably, you're probably fine you're probably but i do fine. i i mean I'm, i make sure it's well lubricated I don't wet any of my knots yet. Are you using fluorocarbon or it's you, Mike? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, he does. He also doesn't retie either, so he's like That's Ben. <laughs> that jig's been tied on for three years. I'm just gonna throw it. What? Hey, when, six when you, pound mono. When you know how to tie a good knot, it don't matter. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> six pound mono for a half ounce snap. He, he be frogging with four pound, bro. Good lord, have That's mercy, Terry Lee. But I tell you what, though, you hear a lot of the pros saying it now. You know, we talk about like technology and i think we said it a couple lives ago but line technology has gotten so great that you know guys are going smaller and smaller and smaller on the fluoro and stuff that they're using well, and it's interesting because not so much now but i would say five six years ago i'm almost exclusively only used 10 pound and 12 pound tests really whether that's cranking flipping or whatever and i had a lot of success doing it and now you jumped your line size up no, uh, maybe on bigger jigs I use seventeen, but like yeah. I still crank on ten. I crank, 10. I crank eight. on ten. I crank on eight. I've done it. I yeah. crank, I, I shallow crank on eight copoly, mm -hmm. and then when I throw a little bit bigger, like you know, like a deeper di deep deep diving, like a uh, Fritz side or something, I'll throw like ten pound on there. But yeah, eight and ten is pretty staple. Oh, I'll for use me. like and ten on 
six XDs. Well, then yeah, when, yeah. when I go to like six XDs or big deep diving plugs, I'll go, I'll go 12 pound on that unless I can't get it down. And then I'm usually not changing line size. Usually I'm adding like lead and stuff yeah. to the hooks. You got to make sure it's wet, Mike. You got to get, got to get in there, bud. Yeah. I mean, I, I crank on 10 pound for the most part. If I'm cranking lay down and stuff with square bill, I have one that I throw 14. Uh, Cause I'm not worried about yeah. depth as much as I am, you know, being able to get those fish out of there um and, i mean that's like bladed jigs for me i use 10 or 12 do you for the most part yeah and i throw pretty much everything else is on 14 to 16 pound jigging spoons floater spoons i do use like 17 yeah i throw that in, on 20 yeah because you're putting a lot of pressure on <laughs> well it. usually you're snagging cat spoon. catfish in the butthole you do snag <laughs> a lot of catfish in the butthole <laughs> What about you guys uh, that are that are watching, listening and stuff? Uh, are you big flutter spoon fans? Because I'll tell you what, it's absolutely one of my favorite ways to catch them in the summertime when they're schooling. Like, you have no idea what you're going to set the hook into. Usually, it's a good bass when you're throwing a big flutter spoon, or it's a big old catfish. And we had that happen numerous we're, times last year. Yeah, we're talking a lot. I'm enjoying it. So you know, a lot of people go to braid when they're flipping like lay downs and stuff like that. Braid is actually the least abrasion resistant out of all three line types. Uh, because if you get one nick in one strand of that braid, it's you reduce it by 75% strength and you're more than likely going to break a fish off. Yeah. I'm I learned so much just picking the brains of the guys that actually make the line that like, I'm so confident that outside of a frog and punching, I don't use braid. I'll flip into the middle of a lay down with fluorocarbon and I have complete faith that when I jack a fish, I can drag it out of there. I don't use braid for flipping anything unless like it's straight punching. Punching. Yeah. yeah that's it. Punch, straight that's punching. Yeah. But yeah, like I use which we don't do. I use much. 15 pound co poly or 20 pound co poly, depending on what I'm flipping. If it's like big thick buck brush or something, I'll use 20 pound. But yeah, I mean, like I, I don't flip with braid anymore. Yeah, I flip I flip with 20 pound flora <laughs> pretty much exclusively. <laughs> Sinkos uh, are braid fluorocarbon also. Yeah. Like I said, it's so cool because everybody does something different. Yeah, Pete, Pete also throws his three hundred dollars swim baits on eight pound test too. No, that's <laughs> point. well, it depends on the weight. That's a lie. I either he doesn't throw those swim baits. At he all. doesn't throw. Them. I either <laughs> throw them on on twenty or twenty five pound. It just depends on the bait and how heavy it is. But yeah, I don't throw. Them. Oh yeah, blade baits, hundred percent. And speaking of smallmouth, we got a really cool guest coming up here. We've already had him on the show once, but. uh if you guys are into smallmouth or want to learn about smallmouth, he's not only a smallmouth angler, but uh, we're going to have Destin on here in a couple of weeks, right? So Yeah, Destin's going to come on. Just We're just going to talk springtime smallies on the Great Lakes, so it's yeah. going to be a fun episode. Uh, if you're up in that area and want to get some tips on how or if you're planning a trip up there, uh, Destin's going to give some juice on uh, on how to get them. So. Oh, yeah. It's a. Uh, it's gonna be a fun episode. He's the dude to talk to about it, and he'll probably go into line and stuff too. So there'll be a continuation of this line conversation that we're having about like what's the best setup to use for those smallies in the springtime. I'll a hundred percent say with line, a thousand percent personal preference. A hundred thousand. Hundred thousand percent. You just got to be comfortable. Two hundred thousand. You can look at how many different ways people do things and it works for them there are advantages and dis disadvantages trey doesn't trust scientists like you said but mm -mm. if you look at sci scientific uh i'm burning all your spots old man i'm telling everybody i can't burn your spots because you don't believe in waypoints so when you get <laughs> go out of the go out of the mouth turn left into the bay go to the fourth dead tree on the peninsula and start your drift there like what there's nine thousand dead trees and you know what is it the fourth one closest to the beach or furthest hey, away? <laughs> hey hey no one's ever found your dad's spot no he can't even find him half the time. <laughs> Around here somewhere, just hey, put her down. We'll hey, figure it hey, out. Don't, don't, don't worry, Big Pete. Uh, your son has gotten on me numerous times for deleting my waypoints off my yeah, calf. Every I yell at Trey vacation. all the time. He's like, every time I leave the lake, I delete my waypoints. I'm like, are you, why? I just There's I, stuff that I know where it's at, and I'll go, and I can't find it if it weren't for that waypoint. I'll tell you what. You just got to go 15 seconds, take a left. You got to be running <laughs> 30. <laughs> Now you could delete them on Harris because let, let's be real. Yeah, like, I, I I mean, but I will say I've well, been finding some so new stuff. So it's one of those things. Um, every brush pile I find. He said my fish like that, so I don't delete. The fish don't know. I hear that. But like if I see a school off a ledge or something, yeah. like I'll mark it and then I'll get When will the one cast mm -hmm. fishing tournament be this year? Sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get something going. I'm thinking 
Maybe we'll do something with my old man's down here and Mike comes up. So I I actually had a dream about that the other night that we hosted like, and we'll have to get our buddy Doug involved because he has like all the way in stuff, but you do above scales. We could do above scales or, or make it big. But yeah, like, uh, uh yeah we definitely need to throw something together he said that jeff you should have a yoga instructor on to talk about stretches to do on deck i can get a yoga instructor on i promise if you want to it's not my wife that (laughs) that would that would be an episode are they gonna stretch on the table like i feel like we're we're crossing no we we need to go out and do it on the lake we fish for smallmouth on the new river blade to floor braid to floor on what lake leader do you guys recommend so steven for me on if you're talking spinning rods um, I put a pretty long leader on, but I, I retie a lot. So I might put a 15, 20, 25 foot leader on. You really only need six, seven foot. Yeah. But I put a lot of extra on because I do retie quite a bit. Um, because another thing with fluorocarbon is I get, I get paranoid because uh, like braid, it's super hard to nick it, but when it does get nicked, it breaks super easy. So I will, um, I'll retie pretty frequently depending on on the situation if i'm fishing a tournament i'll retie after almost every <laughs> fish trey can you fly a plane through the alps with a map and stopwatch i don't know can you uh, trey? Uh, no i need a compass a protractor and a six pack nick if you buy the yoga pants i'll wear them bud <laughs> oh god i just picked up Please. a bubble call set hey. I, I got the call set and the scale nick. and it is you heard it. You will buy yoga pants. This man will wear them on one. You of buy the eyes. yoga pa- pants and we will do a live on the water and I will wear those. Yoga oh pants. my gosh. I'll tell awful. you what, Nick, you buy them, you buy them. And we're not going to, we're not going to use Kerr, but which, so for our tournament series this year, Trey and can, I, can you get a pair that says juicy? Hold on. Backside? Trey and I are fishing. If Nick gets them, it's going to be rough. <laughs> Trey and I are fishing together. Nick and Mike uh, Nadeau, who's a good friend of ours, are fishing together. We're fishing the fishers of men. So here's the bet I'll make with you, Nick. If you beat us at Gaston. At Gaston? Gaston. If you and Mike beat us at Gaston, I will wear yoga pants in the next fisherman tournament. If we beat you, <laughs> if we beat you to be determined. I'll, I'll come up with something. We'll figure something out, but we'll make we'll make a bet. We'll make a bet at Kerr this week. All right, bud. We'll come up with something. Oh, <laughs> bro, you just walked right in. Oh, I'm wearing them. Mike's got like 30 years experience on gas, and we're gonna get our teeth kicked in, and I'm gonna oh, be out there in yoga bro. pants. So no, Mike's not gonna make it to that tournament because his brake lines are getting cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not watching Pete wear <laughs> yoga pants on Dagum tournament when I'm standing behind him. I'm a you know twerk I mean? up there yeah, for you, bro. I, I was gonna ask who's running who's running the front of the boat. Uh, so gas is going to be, be me. My, no, that's my well, boat. I'll be there all week with my boat. So we'll just fish out of mine. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Well, Kerr and gas and we're going to run Jordan and falls with your boat. Okay. That's fine. That works. So you've got, got the points on there already. <laughs> I deleted my waypoints. Son today. of a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the other uh, pants are going to be rough. I, we'll, we'll like, dude, you, I'll put a sensitive content. You just, you just pick. So if you do have to wear yoga pants, you know, that's the month of April. Oh yeah. It's going to be like hot, steamy, swampy. It'll be on Jordan too. So it'll be packed with a bunch of no, pleasure that's, boaters. And is it April or is it May? Gaston is April. Uh-uh. Oh, no. We have Gaston the first week and then we go to Jordan three weeks later. I hope it's raining so you have to wear your bibs. Guys, can you <laughs> provide feedback on brands for trailer steps? Trick step. Either Trick Step or DD26 is making them now. Those are the two I would recommend. Yeah. DD26 is a veteran owned. Veteran-owned, American-made quality products. All of their stuff is good. I haven't seen anything that they make that I don't like. Um, it's all way over-engineered. Hundred percent, dude. It's just like but I think a- Trick Step is US too. I think yeah. they're out of the Great Lakes somewhere. Yeah, is Trick Step the one that you mount off to the side? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, not many make the inline like what you have. I like yours, but Mike Johns that he just said I just mounted mine. I saw his when I was down in Florida, and I really, really like. Mike, it. if you got a picture of it, post it on on the chat if you can. I don't know if you can. Ben, look, there's one rule, Nick, and no MLF yoga shorts. <laughs> DD26 motor cover on my boat. Yep, I've got the motor cover. I've got the the uh, steer stops and the um 
transom safety. Yeah, that's a thousand dollars that he just. It's gave. not cheap, but I bought it all when I bought the boat because I wanted to get yeah. the, best, the best, and everything I looked was that. And dude, it's solid, billeted, machined it's aluminum, like, like M one A one Abrams. Yeah. Like, like, quality i've dropped that yeah. thing i backed in the water with it still on and some some little um i'm trying to some little asian guy grabbed it for me because i didn't know it was still on i trimmed my motor up and it fell and he came running and i'm like stop somebody was backing <laughs> me in and he's like you dropped this and i was like oh shoot i forgot it was on there i did it i did it um, a, a, like a couple months ago i backed mine in i was like trying to trim it down i'm like what is going on and here it is what are those those street stop steering stops the uh dd26 so that's just if you Google DD26 fishing, it'll be on there. Uh, Chelsea's first tournament's the same day we're on Kerr on Heiko. They they canceled the uh, Sharon Harris Sharon one. Harris one because of the weather. The steering stops. Yep, that's the DD26 one. That man. was They're, last weekend, right? Whatever. Yeah, it was supposed to be last weekend. They got all that rain, and then Sunday it blew 140 miles an hour all day. So she <laughs> went out there and practiced, and yeah, it was rough. Heard the new Hobie glasses are legit. Yes, sir, they are. I've got three of them. Faith and fishing. I've got three pairs as well, and. They are great. If you go to our link trees, which I'm posting in the chat, boom, boom, boom. You can click on the Hobie link. You can go there, save 15%. Also, the Carolina Waters link is there with our code, one cast fishing. Uh, and then I have the link to to our friend Eric Schwinn with Mossy Oak Properties. Mm -hmm. uh, so make sure you check all them out. But yeah, if you go to DD26, David, um, you can check out those steering stuff. They're expensive. I'm telling you right now, like, but they won't break. They're, you're not going to break them, and they are. They're very well built. They are machined aluminum. They're heavy. Like, that's one thing I like about them. If anybody ever comes up to me when I'm taking them off at a boat ramp, then where I'm just going to club them in the yeah, side of the like, head with it. They're like nunchucks. Yeah, <laughs> only better because they're. Um, and you can get them any color. So if you want to color yeah. match your boat, you can do that. Like they've got all that fancy stuff going on. So, mm -hmm. um, I got red ones so that I could look and not miss them. That's pretty uh, good. And uh, I got blue motor toter, and I forget it all the time anyway. Glad you are okay, Mike Johns. What happened? I can't, but I'll post it on Facebook chat later. <laughs> oh, I asked Mike if he could post a picture of his uh, step. So, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Where's everyone fishing tomorrow? So Pete and I will be practicing. Kerr Lake. Kerr Lake. I'll be Bugs on, Island. I'll be on mine. Ben will be on his Lake X. <laughs> yeah, it is like Lake X because you have to live there to fish it. Yep. Who's uh, going to win the classic? Oh, we're going to give those predictions in a minute. But oh, let's give them, man, right now. And this is the last time. Do we want to do it now? Do we want no. to do it? Because next time, next time it'll be the first. It'll our tournament will have already yeah. started. Give doesn't matter. Give bring, your, br bring up the list. Bring no, up. you have to go off I'll, memory. I'll just I'll tell you mine. I can tell you mine. I'll tell you mine. Mine's uh, Luke Palmer. I think Luke Palmer is going to close the deal. And then in the rookie class, I'm rooting for uh, Ben Milliken. You have to pick one, Trey. Who's gonna win the Bassmaster? I'm class? giving a I'm giving a tenured guy. In a nope, you have to pick right. one. Luke Palmer. Luke Palmer. You know they just opened sports betting here in um, North Carolina. <laughs> I won my first bet ever, which Did was you? awesome. Yeah. Would you win like seven bucks? Yeah, I, I only bet five dollars on NC State to beat Duke. Nice. And, uh, no, to no money um, against the spread. They won outright. But anyway, I was looked it up. Why can't we bet on bass fishing? Dude, we should be able to. We should start like, that. I, it should be prop bets. How many 30 What's going on, bets? Clayton? What's, is the big fish going to be like? Yeah, margins and stuff. Yeah. 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 That'd be Justin pretty good. said he'll be on Hartwell. Nick, for me, I can't find the, the roster. So for me, I'm going with a rookie who's risen to the challenge of everything. Uh, he's got some experience in this part of the world. And I am going to say Ben Milliken. Mm -hmm. is going to go out there and win the first Bassmaster Classic he ever fishes. That would be pretty sweet, dude. I know, you know, you got Jason Christie, who's a, a local favorite, obviously got a lot of experience on that lake. There's a couple, of, there's another Oklahoma angler too, and I can't remember. While Ben is picking his, you guys shoot your, uh, your uh, Bassmaster Classic winner in the Clayton, comments. So. Central Arkansas, what's going on, buddy? Who, you're doing who's going to win the Bassmaster Classic? Everybody fire Everybody off at once. in the chat. In Everybody in the chat. Put on there who you believe is going to win the Bassmaster Classic. Um, it's going to be a good event. I'm excited for it. It's heating up. Um, it's a, it's a who's going to bugs? Nobody. Yeah, he said bugs. Oh, that was um, Brad was just uh, I think responding to us. Brad will be at the big bass pro shops if you're in the Cary, North Carolina area and you don't have uh, anything going on tomorrow. You can swing by the bass pro shop. They got the the bass pro shop spring fling whatever they call it going on. So it's going to be Fujita. Fujita. Koya, Koya I can Fujita. see that. Brian. All Schmidt. he does is fish. 
Mike John says so Brian Schmidt. We got Brandon Cobb. <laughs> Jeff said the guy with the most weight. <laughs> Brian Schmidt. <laughs> Milliken, Polinek, and then okay. the guy with the most weight. Brandon P, another Polinek. That's so, a good one. Have you heard any rumors of what's there's is it what's being released the classic? They're, dude, they've been super tight lipped. So Lorenz released their new series of graphs, which takes the place of have the they, old. Have uh, they come out? Because yeah, it, it takes place of the what was the like the entry level one that just had sonar and mapping. Was it the hook? Yeah. The so hook, they yeah. they released the eagle, which is uh, which is taking it place. Seth Ellis, there you go. So anybody in carry, if you want to see Seth Ellis, uh, he'll be up at Bass Pro Shop tomorrow, and he's giving a seminar. What time is that, Brad? So we can let everybody know. And Seth Ellis is a local hammer, and he also fishes the MPFL. MPFL just won uh, one out there on Jordan on Tuesday. Heck, of, and a super nice guy. If you're up yeah. there, make sure you holler at him. He'll he'll be on the show here soon too. Yeah, but um, um, because on tackle where I used to be able to get. I mean, they had massive discounts on Lawrence for sure, and I think the other two companies too. Yeah, but I don't know what's coming out. They've been. Did they've you, been they're always tight lipped, right? Can you grab that hair off his hat? It's bothering me. It's right there on the edge. They're they're always tight lipped. But we're a week out by this point. Should, yeah, it's it's been good, man. Yeah, Hook is now the Eagle, David. Yeah, ben, that's what I was going with. Twelve ben, o'clock uh, at Bass Pro. Ben, who's your winner of the classic? You still haven't picked. Fujita. Fujita. Oh, yeah, you did pick. So yeah, the uh, short term. The right. Eagle was the new graph re- re- released by Lawrence. You won't see a new active target if they when they do release their next iteration, it'll probably be next I, year. I got a question with you um, on that. Yeah. Do you have the target that um no you don't do you, are you still using Mega Live? No, I went no, I switched. I, I you, can't ever keep anything. <laughs> I know. Did you ever <laughs> use the the uh the target lock? No, I would have if I would have if it would have came out the same time as Because those Mega were Live. severely discounted on Taco Warehouse. So I was yeah. like, mm, they probably didn't work very well, huh? Yeah. What's up, Cody? Yeah. I don't see a lot of people talking about it. So. New trolling motors. Mike's thinking some new trolling motors coming out. Yeah, I don't know. Here we go. Omni's got a thing with the new classic releases. I got some stuff. Yeah, new St. Croix rods, uh, new Daiwa. You know what they need? They need a new forward-facing sonar unit. I hope. I hope somebody <laughs> comes out with something. Daiwa's got a new uh, power pole. Is going to come BFS out. BFS real. BFS yeah, it's real. a domestic. I heard they were coming out with that. It's on their BF seventy, which is I use that on one of my uh, BFS rods. It's a nice little reel. I don't mm-hmm. have the BFS one. I have the original Tatula 70, but it's a nice little I one. still have Abu Garcia Black Max. There's the um, Metanium 70s coming out. DC. There's a thousand. Do, do they have anything on electronics or no? I'm, I'm getting down to it. We're just going to let you let, we're gonna let him keep rolling down through and see. It, I don't know. It'll be most the electronic companies in those do a really good job of being tight lipped about what they have right. coming. Yeah. I suspect we'll see some type of software update probably from Humminbird to update their stuff. Um, I had Humminbird is due to release a new Helix generation because it's been two years now. I actually don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to eliminate the Helix series altogether and they're going to go Solix Apex. Uh, and the the Solix will probably come down a little I, bit. I heard a rumor about that. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me because the the non touch screen is is kind of going away. It is annoying. Um, I like it because I always break touch screen and it never worked because my hands are always gross and. Um, Oh, they do have a better way to keep fish alive, bud. Have you not heard about the fish lung yet? Jeff, make sure you check out fish lung. It is awesome. It, it's a little bit pricey, um, but it it really uh, really does everything uh, they can do to, to help keep fish alive. It's, it's pretty incredible technology. In fact, I think if you go back and listen to our episode with John Cruz, which was last year, I think he talks a little bit about the fish lung. There's talk about the classic banning li- live scope deal. They're not banning live scope, nope. Not this year. I mean, they might talk about it for next year, but they're definitely not for this year. We can't get Solux Ooh. anything. They have to be changing something. Oh, if you can't get them, Brad, yeah. The so Solux may be going away. Maybe they're coming out with a touchscreen uh, Helix version. Uh, but I, I feel like there's going to be a, a, a shake up there because they've run the the Solux Helix for almost ten years now. Uh, mm-hmm. With those two, those two, they added the Apex last year, which is above the Solux. So it makes sense that they would sunset the Solux or the Helix. Solux probably makes more sense because they've had a lot of issues with Solux uh, in every generation. They're good graphs, uh, but they've had touchscreen issues and stuff. Are y'all going to ICAS? You're not this year, Nick. Mm-mm. I say I might. that. Ben might. Ben might. I, I signed up for the – I haven't paid, but I registered as part of it for the media, so I don't know. That's the same time Liz goes to Rhode Island. So yeah. Hey, I was going to ask, Trey, have you used those new Berkeley non-jerkbait jerkbaits? The Kredge? The Kredges? Yeah. Yeah, I've used them. Um, I I only got my hands on two of them. 
they are they are Did that person put useless in the wind the, they have something the, different then no I'll, I'll tell you right now those those credges are super heavy you can depending on what which line you're using i'm using you know eight eight pound fluoro six pound fluoro um they bomb a mile because they're so heavy they are very specific to how you're trying to target fish because they go backwards and so you have to work your rod tip up um but like say you're facing into the wind you got a lay down or a brush pile that has a wide top and they're at the base of the tree if you know how to cast right you can get that credge to float back into the tree but not hit the top of it and get down to the base i haven't caught a single fish off them yet um it, it also hasn't I, we haven't had the right conditions for it. You've only thrown it like one I've only, time, right? Yeah, but I mean, I've thrown them um, it, just to see what they look like on forward-facing sonar, and, and they look good. I know you're going to be able to crush them so, during schooling season. 100%. I just, I just want to go back to Justin said there's talk about the classic banning live scope. Do you know anything about that? It's not happening. Uh, I can tell you that with absolute certainty. And you said I heard they're losing ratings. That is a common internet rumor that people that don't like live scope are starting. The first two elite series events had the best ratings they've had in 15 years as far as viewership numbers, watch time, all of that. So they're not losing ratings. Uh, the problem is all of the um, – I mean, I'm one of them. Like, I, I want to say purist, but I, I also embrace technology. All the people that will not embrace change hate it. Uh, so they're trying to start all these rumors and all this stuff saying that it's killing the sport. All it's doing is just bringing new eyes to the sport, new fans to the sport. Uh, there's a youth movement in fishing right and now. And look at the weights. And look at the weights. So, you know, there's it's a culmination of a lot of things, but this rookie class being the first rookie class that was outstanding that fished all nine BASS Opens, they brought a lot of attention to the Elite Series this year. I mean, look at Ben Milliken, man. Like, nobody can deny it. The, the numbers are there. Everybody can see the numbers. Like, he absolutely has a cult following that, that came to the elite. If, so. you, if you wonder about some of those numbers to back up what Trey saying, go on social media when people are talking about stuff and look at the number of comments that say, I didn't, I've never watched an elite series event until Milliken make made it. I didn't even know there was an elite series until Ben made it. Like all these people didn't know that. And now who's that's gotta be Mike Johns. <laughs> yeah, Mark or Trey. I heard Pete is getting banned. It's been an hour. That, and, and, I gotta get some and, FX um, All right, Mike, have a good night. Are they uh, are they bro. televising? I know, right, David? <laughs> the uh Pro Am tournament. I don't know. I, I hope they do. So, so if you guys didn't see the Pro Am tournament, I didn't mean to steer thunder. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, so I, I saw it today. I, I don't know which day it is, but at the classic. I think there's 10 teams. Mm -hmm. So there's a pro, like there's Matty Wong, uh, Scott Martin. I don't know if Milliken's on it. No, because he's fishing the classic. Yeah, you're right. So 10 guys who didn't make the classic, and they're paired up with a celebrity. So Whiskey Myers, Randy Moss. Really? Um, Patrick Queen, NFL uh, linebacker. Cole, 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 Cole Wetzel. Cole Wetzel, yeah. Uh, Whiskey Myers. Uh, there was a, a is is Dwayne the the rock no, no <laughs> not on. he's probably got a scheduling conflict but you know that's uh that's that's new that's pretty cool it, it's kind of like uh like the NBA celebrity all star game I mean yeah. might as well have it I mean yeah. it's Maddie Maddie's, Maddie's got Co Wetzel so that should be uh that should make for some interesting yeah, that, that, content that's gonna be a good um you couldn't have two different two two different people that are the same. Yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> well, one one tell we can get him on deep South it. Texas boy and oh yeah the the Aloha State kid yeah but like, it's gonna, gonna be fun they're gonna have a oh they're gonna have a blast man Maddie's so what do they do so I I didn't see that it's a team event. tournament a pro and an amateur and but when is it we don't know oh, they, I haven't seen anything about when it was yeah. hang on let me it's I probably tomorrow it's gonna be next week it'll be before the classic I'm sure yeah so. The, the other thing that's going on too, and, and we talked about it before, is uh, if you haven't checked out the MPFL, go right. to uh, MPFL's got a, an event that you can sign up for through the first form. Um, and you can fish with 10 MPFL anglers, one of 10 MPFL anglers if you get chosen. So, no, uh, Prime kickoff 24. So, it's to kick off the classic. Oh, it's okay. on Sk Skiatook Lake in Skiatook, Oklahoma, March 21st from 7th to 11 a.m. So it's a four-hour deal. So it's the day before the Classic. No, uh, you got Randy Moss, Ross Chastain, who's a NASCAR guy, Travis Pastrana. That's kind of nice. a cool one. He's going to uh, hold Brian Robinson, down. <laughs> Cody Cannon from Whiskey Myers, who also owns uh, 
Toad Thumper, Hood, Hood. Toe Wetzel, Hood Fishing. If you've never seen that guy, he, he's a he's a yeah he's massive. He's an dude. influencer. Yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. got a really funny channel. He's got a good channel, lots of good information. And, and then Sydney Wells, who's a bar stool. She's an archery hunter. She's been around for a yeah. while. Um, and then they had uh, also an ML, MLB team of uh, Mickey and Michael Brantley. Yep. So two MLB guys, Chris Zaldane and Hood Fishing. That's going to be an interesting Seth one. Fighter and Sydney Wells. Seth and Sydney, Rick <laughs> Clun and Randy Moss. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait. Randy and Rick, Patrick Queen and Taylor Knowles. You've got Michael Brantley and Mickey Brantley, who are uh, MLB guys. You know, that that might actually be a good pairing. Pastrana and Martin, Cody Cannon, Sukup, Ross Chastain. R- Randy Parks, is country as. B Rob and Jamie Hartman, Co Wetzel and Maddie Wong. Um, so yeah, yeah, those are your teams. I they're gonna televise this, right? It is. It's uh follow the event on bassmaster.com. So they'll be streaming it live on their on their website. Uh when is that the twenty first? Twenty first. I'll be watching that. See, that's more <laughs> yeah, that's I'm more exciting that. than most tournaments right there. Dude. It's definitely more exciting than anything the BPT's doing. Hey, look, um loved the coverage the MPFL has. Great to be able to pick from several cameras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nick, it is. It's awesome. Uh the the NPFL does a great job if you haven't checked them out. Like uh like uh, Trey was saying, head over to the MPFL socials and join that giveaway. Uh, it's free to enter. If you win, they fly you down to Hartwell. Yep. Um, and you're going to fish a 10 man tournament. Hartwell or Murray? It might be Murray. I one of those two. Be. It's yeah. one of the South Carolina lakes. It's either Murray or Hartwell, but they'll fly you there. They're going to pair you up with an MPFL pro. You're going to fish against 10 other, nine other teams, including yourself if you win. Winner gets 2,500 bucks and a year supply of first form supplement. supplement. So, Pretty cool deal that they're doing. And I'm sure oh, there's oh that's why I kept getting those emails. Yeah. I, I unsubscribed. <laughs> I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a bunch of uh other prizes and giveaways and uh, stuff. So KBD boats, uh KBD boats getting giveaway. Yeah. So I, I went I entered that when I was researching my what? problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 2023 Go to, uh, Nitro I'm a, 21 I'm a, I'm a Johnson.com. Yeah. I will enter that. I'll send you the link. Okay. Yeah. So you can win KBD's last ever tournament boat. Who do um, I want to go fishing with? I Oh yeah, so Jeff, I I want to fish for sure, man. Um, I'll hit you up. I'll get to with you offline. I got I got some time off coming up, and we should definitely link up. Um, I don't know what your schedule looks like, but we'll get something going. Hey fellas, hope you guys are well. No one wearing shades tonight. Nah, I don't wear sunglasses inside, man. I'm I'm not cool enough for that. <laughs> Trade. I wore should... them here though. Yeah, yeah, I definitely rocked them today. I just I just ordered my wife last night uh, two pairs of Hobies. So like I think we got like fourteen pairs of Hobie sunglasses. Yeah, because you house. got your kids pair. I got, I you got, got my your... kid, yeah. Kids are rocking them for sports. They're great for kids, man. Like softball, baseball, stuff like that. And then uh, you know every lens that I need for for on the water. And then my wife, she got she got herself some stylish stylish glasses coming in. So. Now, Jonathan, you're good. I appreciate the five star rating. I'll put your name in there. Just um. If you can, uh, either uh, go on YouTube or if you if you listen to us somewhere else, if you can go to those pages. If you, I'm going to post the link tree again. Um, if you go there at the top of it, you'll see all of our our areas where we go. Just click on either the YouTube or the Apple Podcast or whatever. Leave a review there, and I'll I'll just go ahead and enter. I'm off until mid April. All right, Jeff, I'm gonna get up with you, man. We're definitely gonna go. Uh, we're definitely gonna go hit the lake here in the next couple of weeks. Dang, he's off when and he goes back to work right before i get off too but hey april 18th through the 25th i'll be off and i know david's coming down to do some bed fishing i also invited michael johns to come up following his uh his toyota series event i believe in so uh we're gonna go whack some off the bed so if you guys are in the area and you want to go fishing and uh i'm updating the list before every if you want to go bed fishing and stuff you got a boat or you don't got a boat hit us up let us know and uh We'll try to get you out on the water and and jack some big old ones off the bed. So yeah, we're doing that next week. Yeah, you, yeah. Because you still got another week, but you'll be fishing. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, back we'll this see. another four days of thirty-one degree nights will will slow things. Go down. whack them at well, George. I will say Cody. This. Oh, go ahead. When there was a a layer of pollen on the water this morning. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're we're right there. We're yeah. right we're there. Right there. We just need stable warm weather and hundred percent. We don't quite have it yet. Cody, Weird let clothes. us know how you do on Jordan tomorrow, man. We're curious because uh, they've been putting some bags in the boat, dude. They have. They've been putting bags. Jordan's been putting out. Falls has been putting out. Um, I think they're all. Yeah. Well, can I go? I think I might be open. Hal, of course you can go, man. You're always welcome. Is that Hal? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Hal. They were on beds today at Mott on base. 
Oh, a Mott Lake? Oh, no kidding. I, I don't doubt it because Mott's not very, I don't think Mott's very deep. So it's probably pretty warm. They are definitely not. Um, what were the water temps for you today? Uh, 58 yeah. in some parts of the lake. And then if you ran all the way up north, 63, but it's super dirty. Yeah, um, so you're still you're still my, you're still a week or two. There's a little, bunch of males. My that little moved up my there. little pond last week, last Thursday and Friday were 62. Yeah, yeah. You got to look at that morning temp. If it's below 60, they're not going to spawn. So yeah, yep. yep. You've got to get 60 all day, um, all through the night, and that's these cold nights are just slowing it down a little bit. Like I said, we're we're a week, we're two two to three weeks. Cold nights and days I like think. today, all the way was 75 or 80. Yeah, windy. Yep cloudy with some rain like it's not good yeah. if you're on youtube watching us yeah just subscribe and like it man and i, I got your oh. name in the giveaway so appreciate you um yeah so what was i about to say i don't know we were talking about weather we were talking about fit. yeah so we just need oh yeah and then next week we've got cold nights and then we've got in the extended forecast seven days of nothing but clouds and rain and low 60 temperature so it's still early. Everybody should be excited, but it's not quite there yet for our North Carolina folks. It's getting there, uh, but they ain't moving up. <laughs> there's, there's Fishers some... of Men on Jordan is going to be a good one, Nick. Yeah, we're there at a really good time that last Saturday of April. So, oh yeah, that's going to yeah, be fire. It's going to be it's going to be a blast. Yep. I'm on the Facebook community page. Yeah, you're good. You're good, Jonathan. I got you, brother. I appreciate. Yeah, if you're you. not if if you're in the chat right now and you're not on the Facebook community page. <laughs> Go over to our Facebook community page and uh, and uh, sign up to sign up, answer some questions, and we'll we'll let you in. This is the only th thing I hate about fishing this time of year: ten to twenty mile an hour winds every single day. Yeah, Six wind don't bother you. Sixty-three to sixty-six. You must have been up north, I'm assuming, but you don't have to tell me where you're at. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, that's got to be Farrington, <laughs> son. I caught them in two feet of water on bushes in Jordan yesterday. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Skeeter, man. The bushes is where it's at. Man. They, yeah. Jordan, once the water starts to get warm, the bushes always heat up. Yep. Put them in the boat, gents. Get your get your last minute questions in. We're a little over an hour. I've got to go get the boat hooked up and ready to go so that I can get up in the morning and trade 64. and I can go run around. 64, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, bugs ain't gonna be 64. No, I bet we see 56 in the morning and maybe get 60 if we actually get close to 70 by the end of the day. Yep. But hey, we appreciate all you guys. Like Pete said, if you got anything else, fire it at us right now. If not, we're gonna jump off and uh go get everything buckled down. So uh yeah, I'll be hitting you up, Jeff. Yeah. Um, yeah, make sure you're you're like, follow, all that good stuff. Um, we appreciate everybody, man. Um yeah, brother. I'm gonna get with you too, Rick. We're gonna get out uh in the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna have much more time to fish for a little bit. So south side was 63, north was 59. What? That's wild. That's usually the opposite. We had a south wind today. I'm hooked up and ready to go. I know I had to bring my truck over to Trey's to record though, so I couldn't keep it. Uh, I guess I could have towed it here, but mm -hmm. I'll hook it up when I get home and get her get her ready to rock for the morning. Top the batteries off and make sure my forward facing is working because that's all you need. And they just jump in the boat. So <laughs> wear your PFD and be safe. Yeah. Hey, that's a great uh, a great point. If you're running, wear your PFD, uh, especially. When you're running, even when you're not, if you didn't see, yeah, um, this is the last it. thing that I'm going to talk about. And then we're going to do our sign off. Um, and the lady bass anglers, they were down on Toledo Bend last week. Water there is mid sixties, uh, but it was rainy, windy, uh, Toledo Bend gets rough. Uh, Nikki Joe Haley is one of their anglers. She was on the front of the boat. Um, and, uh, I don't, I think she got hung. I have, no, she, she got hung or something. I have to go back and read it. Um, she was, she was working to, to do something with a rod and a wave hit her and caught her off and it threw her off the front of the boat. Um, it was raining. Uh, they were probably three footer. She was able to grab the gunnel as she went in, but because of being in the water, it filled her bibs and her boots and it actually drug her down. And she saw the bottom of her trolling motor and her co-angler ran up there and grabbed the hood of her coat and was able to pull her back up. Um, otherwise she would have been drugged to the bottom and died. So if you're fishing in rough water, whether it's warm water or cold, uh, and I'm making this statement right now because I don't do it and I'm going to start doing it, wear your PFD because it can happen that fast. She went from having a, a heck of a day fishing, having a good time to to being almost dead. I mean, probably a game of inches at that point. If her co-angler doesn't 
react doesn't grab her hood she's on the bottom of the lake and you're or probably she doesn't not, have a co-angler or she doesn't have a co-angler so uh always when you're running always in cold water i did get that skeeter and um <laughs> if you're fishing rough water no matter how warm it is just throw your pfd on we're most of us are probably wearing inflatables now it doesn't take up that much space it doesn't hinder you and i need to do a better job of it as well uh it's not worth it um yeah, last year nine ang nine I'm not gonna say anglers nine uh that's uh passing through. Oh, last yeah, year nine lives were lost on Jordan Lake alone here in North Carolina. Yeah. Um and every single one of them would have been avoided if they had worn PFD. So wear your flotation device so you can go home to whoever it is you want to go home to, so you can make the next tournament, uh, so you can do whatever it is you need to do. Uh we want to see y'all. Well, live. we ain't the only ones on the water because as things heat up, so do all the pleasure boaters, all the jet skiers, all those other folks too. So you got to pay attention. So absolutely. So appreciate y'all. Wear your PFDs. Stay safe. Treat each other well. Uh, stop arguing on the internet. All that good stuff. We love y'all. We appreciate the support. And uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, we thank you for continuing to help us cultivate a culture of anglers helping anglers one cast at a time that's a good one that's a good one. Oh, oh god it's a toad it's, son. Huh? it's a f toad dude let's go i wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow feel like it's gonna be a bad day